So I grow facial hair because I have a face for radio. <laughs> so I try to cover up as much of it as I can. Hold on, kids. We're filming. <laughs> it's Mike D here in the Lunkerville Lounge at ICAS 2016. And uh, we're here with Jason Austin. Any That's relation me. to Steve Austin, the Bionic um, Man? I probably have enough metal in my body to be somewhere related, yeah. Well, it's, yeah. so Jason uh, is affiliated with HAL, Heroes on the Water, and Lunkerville and South Bend, um, we are also associated with them. It's a very important cause that helps veterans, disabled veterans, and non-disabled veterans, just veterans of, mm -hmm. of war who are struggling, having a hard time, and thanks for being here. Hey, it's my and pleasure, Thanks for what actually. you do. So and tell us a little bit about Heroes on the Water and how are you involved? Um, well, obviously, Heroes on the Water is a, a nonprofit organization that takes veterans and we're actually expanding to first responders uh, kayak fishing as a way to decompress, de stress, you know, uh, fish, hang out, have a good time, and forget about some of those post traumatic stress issues and physical issues that we deal with daily. There's so many organizations you can donate to that help veterans. Yes. Um, why is Heroes on the Water different? Um, I mean, we're, we are and we're not. Um, other veteran organizations, some of them have a very broad spectrum of what they do, and we're specifically kayak fishing. There's, you know, there's nothing else that's involved with it. It's all about getting out on the water in a kayak. It's not boats, it's not standing on the bank normally. I mean, you can, but it's kayak fishing, and that's, we, we try to stay streamlined instead of expanding and being all over the place and trying to do a bunch of things. And, and you know, I like that it's focused. Why, why is kayak fishing important to you? You look at kayak fishing and from the physical aspect of it, that some of the veterans and whatnot physically struggle with getting back in physical therapy. It's, I mean, really when it comes down to it, it helps with physical therapy. It helps, you know, the guy that has been hurt, wounded, whatever, sitting on his couch to get out and do something physical. Um, the fishing part of it, I mean, you don't even have to be in combat to understand the tranquility of being out on the water and catching fish. Um, the other side of it, mentally, is a lot of us struggle coming back to, I guess, find ourselves again or be independent in something. And kayak, I mean, you are the captain of your own ship. That is, you make the decisions. There's not a guide, somebody driving a boat, going here, going there. If you see a spot, you know, that's over there that, you know, I may or may not know something about fishing, but that looks like a spot I want to go try out. You don't have to ask anybody. You just pedal, paddle over there and give it a try, so. It's kind of that independence thing coming back that, you know, I know personally, having spent so much time in the hospital when I was wounded, that everybody's always telling you where to go, what you can and can't do, what, you know, when to be there, when not to be there, and kayak fishing gives you back that freedom, that independence, and a lot of times we lose that in the whole rehabilitation process that, you know, you're not, you can't make a decision for yourself. And how puts you out in the water and lets you make a lot of decisions. Why don't you tell me your story and how you got involved in Heroes in the Water? So in 2007, um, I was in Iraq, uh, traveling southbound on one of the MSRs, and we struck two IEDs. Um, I had a broken neck, broken back, left frontal and parietal brain damage, some pretty significant hearing loss and some trauma to my right leg, hip. And, uh, so for the next 900 days, I spent in hospitals, surgeries, physical therapy, learning how to walk, talk, remember again. And at one point with my brain injury, I was told that, you know, you probably need to get used to the wheelchair because you're probably not gonna ever walk again. So, you know, you kind of deal with it. And there's a whole year, I guess, because of that, that brain injury that I don't even remember. Like, it's, it's a fog. So you come out of this fog, 
into this world that has changed and you don't really believe that anything's changed. In your mind, nothing's wrong because now this is your new norm. And um, I mean, you'll hear people talk about how it, life is easier in theater. So now you have to deal with the transition back in and some of us don't deal with it very well. And I know I pushed my family away. Um, I struggled, I guess, with all the medications and whatnot. So I ended up, you know, being medically retired after 19 years and six days of service, going from a guy that ran a platoon of 40 in combat operations and was successful, um, and 19 years of structure to nothing. You kind of push all that stuff away and it came to the point where I had made the decision that I was going to be a statistic and as the world has learned that you know 22 veterans commit suicide a day um, so I wrote the note I bought the shotgun and the one day that I actually decided that I was going to do it my now wife was at work and uh, so I put the note out on the counter the apology letter to my family and went out and stuck the barrel in my mouth and my phone rings. Okay. It was enough to stop me and pause for a second and I look at it and there's a number I didn't recognize and I hit the button, I said hello. And this voice on the other end said, hi, you know, my name's so and so. Uh, I got your name from some people, I understand you just moved down here. I, I, kind of do some fishing with heroes on the water, would you be interested in, in going with me tomorrow to go try to catch some redfish? That wow. pause was enough to say, okay, let me try it. Because tomorrow wasn't, you know, it wasn't in the plan. I wasn't supposed to be here tomorrow. So I met the guy at the ramp and there was another veteran there and of course you know, we helped unload the kayaks and get in and went out probably five or six hours in the flats in Tampa and some of the back country and I, I didn't catch a thing. Like I saw fish. That day changed me obviously forever. And uh, so I went home and I thought about it all and the next day I went to the pawn shop and got rid of the shotgun and bought a rod and reel. Um, I started saving my money and bought a kayak. Uh, I reached out to some of the companies to, to see, you know, hey, I don't really make a lot of money and they helped. So it kind of gave me this, oh my goodness, like there's people out here that actually care which I hadn't run into any at that point. And um, so, you know, how saved me. They literally, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now if that phone hadn't rang. There's, there's a guy like me somewhere. There's 22 of them that tomorrow is their last day. So if I can get to them and say, make tomorrow be the first day of the rest of your life, then here we are.